Because I've made some messes, man. I've made some real big messes in my life. I just wish that I hadn't squelched out the voice of God. It would have saved me heartache. It would have saved me a lot of wasted prayer time. How do I mean that? There's a lot better things that I could pray for than to get me out of this mess I made, you know? There's souls out there. There's needs of other people. He didn't want us to spend all of our life saying, Help! You know, sorry! Forgive me, I repent. Now get me out of it. <laughs> We've all been there and done that. Come on. None of us have been righteous. No, not one. That includes you and me. So let's get real. We've messed up many times. And we're going to mess up again. Come on, we're human. To err is human. But to be a child of God, we're going to get rid of some of that humanity in light of his glory, in light of his presence, in light of his power, in light of his spirit, in light of his leading and guiding us into all truth. Because we can be deceived. We can deceive ourselves. Our hearts can be deceitful. Because God isn't controlling everything in your heart. But he'll give you those desires of the deeper things of your heart when you will trust him for it. And it'll be a whole lot better than what you can imagine, ask, or think. If we would just seek him, if we would just honor him, if we would just reverence him, if we would just worship him and, and praise him, then let's just see what God's going to do for us. Now, I know that that sounds manipulative, but, you know, he made the rules. He's the one that says, I inhabit the praises of my people. So, hey, you know what? If it pleases God and we're doing it, then we can expect him to be pleased to bless us. When we're, he said, seek the kingdom of God first, Okay, so I'm seeking the kingdom of God first so that I can get all these other things that he said he would give me. But if you quit seeking the kingdom of God and he blesses you with this stuff, you're going to get yourself in a bankruptcy situation. Oh, I got the house, I got the car, now I can't pay for it. Better get back into the seeking the kingdom of God because I got bills, I got a mess. I lost my job. My promotion didn't happen. When I kind of got things mixed up, I got what I wanted, so I kind of like got kind of drug into my blessings instead of the one that blesses us. So let's go back to the basics of seeking God. And when we seek him, we will find him when we search for him with all of our heart. So you see, it's not part of your heart. It's all of your heart. Just a little bit, you know. I'll let him have this because I'm afraid that if I give him everything, he's going to expect too much out of me. I won't have my way. Good thing. Good thing you've done that long enough. Didn't work out for you too well. So. We can sing that, have thine own way, Lord. Thou art the potter, I'm the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I'm waited, yielded, and still. It's great when God has his way. Is it good, Stacy, when God has his way, when he directs your path? Is it good, Randy? Yes, it is, because he will never, ever, ever lead you in any path that's going to end up harmful to you or others. He's never going to do that. He's never, get this in your mind, new mindset, he's never going to withhold any good thing from you. Never means never. He's never going to deny you any good thing. He is never going to abandon you. He is never going to refuse to hear your prayers. He's never going to shut the door in your face. He said, whoever comes to him, I will in no wise cast them out. 
If you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. How many's called upon him after they've been saved? To save you out of a situation. I've done it. Oh, it says, call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. I need to be saved from this stupid thing, from this way that I went, which I'm sorry. I'll save me. And he does. Because if we come to him, he's going to receive us. He's not going to condemn you, refuse you. I'm not going to plug his ears and say, well, you made your bed, lay in it. Let the world, let the church, let your brothers and sisters, let your family talk about how you can lay in your vomit. He doesn't do that. He picks you up, cleans you up, hugs you, dresses you up, <laughs> embraces you. No matter how stinky you might be from being a prodigal in the pig pen, eating the pig's food, smelling like a pig, looking like a pig, <laughs> filthy. When you come home to him as a prodigal child, he embraces our stinky self, cleanses us, hugs us, loves on us. And, oh, I'm sorry I've sinned against you in heaven. Oh, let's celebrate. You know, we used to sing that song, let's celebrate Jesus, celebrate. Do you know that he can celebrate you and I? When we come into his presence, when we come back to where he wants us to be, he not only welcomes you, gives you a brand spanking new clean robe, puts a ring on your finger, of association and power. I like to think that's the signet, the signet ring. You know what the signet ring is? Put that ring on your finger and you can start. You can start commanding. You can start, you have authority and power with that signet. You know, when you got his ring on your finger, then you can start decreeing and you can, you can tell the devil where to go. Yeah, I got the authority to tell you where to go. Go to hell. Take the hell with you. <laughs> Get it out of my life. Come on, it's true. Because you got authority. You got power. He can't condemn you anymore. You're clean. You've gone back to the Father. He's washed you. You got a robe of righteousness on you. Brand new position in him of authority and power, and a child of God, not a servant, a servant child. There's a difference, you know. We're not coming to him with demands. We're a servant child because we're under the umbrella of his protection and his power and then have brand new authority to do the things that are profitable for the kingdom of God. And we're part of the kingdom of God. So, hey, authority, power and celebration. So he celebrates you when you're walking with him. And if you go out, come back in. If you stray, turn around. He will not criticize and condemn you and slap you in the face and send you to the woodshed and tell you how bad you are. What took you so long to come to your senses? He doesn't do that. Not one word. And the Bible says that he said, shame, shame on you. Look what you've done with everything I've given you. Look at, look at, look at you. You know, in the pig pen, that's degrading. You've dishonored me. He never said that. He tells the servants, hey, get ready. We're going to have a party. And it won't be a pity party. It's a celebration because my son's come home, my child's come home. And he's not going to walk into that room as a beggar or a servant. He's going to come as a son. He's going to have a nice robe on, clean clothing, ring on his finger, association with me. That's what he has for you and I. So I believe that the remnant needs to get closer to God. 
spend time with him. Doesn't matter if they think that you're the weirdest thing that ever walked the face of the earth or in the church. Ignore that. There are many people that will not walk that way with you. They will not join with you. They will not appreciate you. And by the way, when you pursue the things of God, you're going to make them look bad. They might be your leaders, and they're looking bad because they forgot how to pray. They forgot how to, to reverence God. They forgot how to let him make the rules and do what he wants to do in this house. So when you start doing that, they're not going to want to associate with you because, you know, you're, you're crimping their style and you're stepping on their toes even though you're not trying to do that. You're just wanting to pursue God. They're going to like that. They're going to separate themselves from you, kick you out of their presence. They just do that if they don't want God. But we can seek him with all of our heart and we'll find him. And we're going to also get a lot more than we ever asked for. If we seek him, don't stop seeking him. If you've got to this position in God, there's always higher, 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 broader, 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 deeper, 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 denser, 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 when you can press into you the presence of God. Press it down. Shake it together. Run it over. Will God give unto you so that you can become a blessing? Anybody? Subscribe to Prophet June Sheltron on YouTube for daily prophecy and devotional. Please send your donations to 40403 Sunburst Drive, Dade City, Florida 33525 or use the donation button on our website, propheticlight.org. For international donations through PayPal, select Goods and Services E. You can also donate through Zelle using our email address, propheticlight at yahoo.com. Thank you and may God richly bless you.